I'm going to apologize now because he will fall asleep during this video. It's not the most interesting topic for a dog, the relationship between sensor size and exposure, but it is one I feel needs to be covered because I've had more debates than I can count in the past of people trying to claim that having a larger sensor gives you a brighter exposure than a smaller sensor, and that simply isn't the case. Now, we'll kick off by proving that it's not the case, and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty of why it's not the case. So here are two sample test shots, one taken with my full-frame A7 III, and one taken with my APS-C-sized A6400. Both cameras using the same Sony 35mm f1.8 full-frame lens. Both cameras have exactly the same settings in terms of aperture, shutter, and ISO. And you will see that whilst both of them have slightly different fields of view, because one's a crop sensor and one's not, the exposures of the area that you can see remains exactly the same. And just to confirm, it's got nothing to do with the fact that it's a full frame lens before anyone's thinking that APS-C lenses will create a different exposure. Here are two more sample shots with the same two cameras, this time using the Viltrox 23mm f1.4 APS-C lens, again set to exactly the same settings as was taken with the 35mm. And again, despite the fact that the fields of view look slightly different, all four sample images have exactly the same exposure. You're certainly more interested in this topic than I thought you were going to be. Now, in terms of why all of the exposures are the same and why sensor size has nothing to do with it, first we need to understand what determines the exposure within an image. So on the sensor, there are millions of photocytes. When we expose a sensor to light, these photocytes will detect light, and at the end of the exposure, they will measure how much light they detected. So if they're not exposed to a lot of light, they don't detect a lot of light, and thus you get that particular pixel ends up being quite underexposed. If you expose a particular pixel to a lot of light, then it will gather a lot of light, and thus you will end up with a brighter pixel, and that area will be more exposed. Where the misconception starts to come in is when we're talking about the size of the photocytes on the sensor. So in the case of the A7 III and the A6400, both of them have a resolution of 24 megapixels, so they have roughly the same number of photocytes. But the A7 III sensor is significantly larger than that of the A6400, which means the A6400 has to cram the same number of photocytes into a smaller space, and thus each individual photosite is smaller than those of the A7 III. And then some people would argue that because the photosites are smaller, they can't capture as much light, so therefore must give you a more underexposed image than you would get from the larger photosites. However, what they don't factor in is that whilst each individual photosite might be smaller, there are more of them in any given surface area than the full frame. If you were to take the A7 III and put it into Super 35 mode, so it's shooting an APS-C size picture, you're only getting a 10 megapixel resolution, which means whilst each individual photosite of the A7 III might be larger than the A6400, in the same surface area of sensor, the A6400 has nearly two and a half times more photosites collecting light. In essence, it would be like if you were to take a tray into your garden and put it down on the floor. And then right next to it, in the same size space, you were to put a lot of shot glasses all tucked in tightly next to each other, and then wait for it to rain. Each individual shot glass wouldn't be able to hold anywhere near as much water as the tray would, but collectively, they cover the same size space, so would be able to collect roughly the same volume of water. But in essence, you can take sensor size out of the equation and still see that having smaller photosites doesn't actually change your exposure. If you compare up the 24 megapixels of the A7 III, the 12 megapixels of the A7S III, and the 61 megapixels of the A7R4, all of them are full-frame cameras, but all of them have wildly different sized photosites, and yet take any picture with any three of them, and all of them will produce the same exposure with the same settings. So the size of the photosites have no bearing on the exposure. 
The next argument some people will put across is that it's not the size of the photo sites, but the size of the sensor. Because in having a larger full frame sensor, you are capturing more light than an APS-C would, or a micro four thirds, or a smartphone. And so by capturing more light, you're producing a brighter exposure. Again, not actually the case, because whilst it's true that having a larger sensor gives you a greater area to capture light, and thus for the same amount of time in the same settings, you would capture more light, you've also got that light spread over a larger area. So in the case of the original samples that I put up, the full frame and APS-C on a 35 mil sensor, that's a full frame lens. So it's projecting a, an image circle big enough to cover a full frame sensor. And obviously the APS-C sensor can't see all of that image circle, which means a lot of the light that's traveling through the lens isn't actually being detected by the sensor. So yes, in total, more of the light is being detected by the full frame sensor. However, the full frame sensor is also seeing a greater field of view. So the extra light that it's capturing is actually coming from bits of the scene that the APS-C sensor doesn't see at all. So if you compare the two parts of the scene that you can see, i.e. that center portion, both of them are still exposing the same because both parts of both sensors are still receiving the same amount of light. And then the final argument is considering that it's something to do with the lenses. That a lens designed for a larger sensor is letting more light through, so therefore must produce a brighter exposure than an equivalent spec lens for a smaller sensor. However, what that doesn't factor in is that whilst the focal lengths of lenses might be the same, the fields of view that they project are actually different. So again, in the original samples that I put up, the 35mm full-frame lens on a full-frame camera and the 23mm APS-C lens on an APS-C camera actually produce the same fields of view because the 23mm is designed to project only big enough to cover an APS-C size sensor. And thus, despite the fact that the focal lengths are different, the fields of view that they project are actually roughly the same. So again, it comes down to how much surface area you're having to cover. Whilst it's true that a larger sensor lens will let a greater volume of light through than a smaller sensor lens, it's having to cover a greater surface area. So the amount of light that then falls on each individual part of the sensor will remain consistent. So it doesn't matter whether you put a full frame lens or an APS-C lens on an APS-C camera, you're still gonna get the same exposure because the full frame lens might be letting a greater volume of light through, but most of it is not actually reaching the sensor because it's projecting too wide for it to see. The actual density of the light that's traveling through the lens remains the same regardless of what size sensor you're dealing with or what size sensor the lens that you're using was designed for. And the same density of light is going to give you the same exposure. It's the fundamentals of what makes a speed booster work. A speed booster lets you take lenses that are designed for larger sensor cameras and not only mount them onto cameras with smaller sensors, but it takes all that extra light that would normally be missed and compresses it down to fit onto that smaller sensor and then you get a brighter exposure because the actual density of light has been increased. There are then only three aspects that actually affect what your exposure is going to be. Firstly, how much light is able to pass through the lens, controlled by your aperture. Secondly, how long are you exposing your sensor to light for? The shutter speed. Thirdly, are you amplifying the signal that comes off the sensor in any way, shape, or form? Your ISO. So the size of your sensor, the size of your photo size, or the format of lens that you're using has absolutely no bearing on exposure at all. It all comes down to your aperture, your shutter, and your ISO settings. And as long as you keep those settings the same, it doesn't matter whether you're using a medium format camera or a smartphone, the exposures of your finished images will remain the same. Largest photo sites won't give you a better signal, it will only give you a better signal to noise ratio, which is gonna give you cleaner images, not brighter images. And even then, you're only realistically gonna see that difference in noise performance when you're viewing it close to 100%. But that is not a topic for this video, because I've covered it all in this video. But in terms of this video, 
that pretty much ends it and I told you he'd fall asleep. But as always, if you have any questions or queries, feel free to leave them in the comment box down below. While you're down there, if you haven't already and you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.